After the unanimous critical success of his Fight Club offshoot Roar Underground, initially complete with sexy dancers, it's no surprise that the recently returned to WWE Shane McMahon is being considered to take over creative for the Raw brand entirely. According to Alex McCarthy writing over at Sportskeeda, a source inside WWE has told him Shane is being considered to take Raw off Bruce Pritchard's hands, leaving him to concentrate on SmackDown. Pritchard has been in charge of creative on both main roster brands since WWE suddenly fired then Raw executive director Paul Heyman back in June. WWE's statement at the time said this was to streamline our creative writing process for television, consolidating both teams from Raw and SmackDown into one group led by Bruce Pritchard. Just two months later, Sportskeeda is now reporting Pritchard is making no secret about the fact he'd like to lighten his workload and he's been struggling with the long hours, implying that was never actually the reason WWE fired Heyman from creative and that it was likely as a sacrificial lamb move to explain Raw's falling ratings to shareholders during the Q2 earnings call. According to McCarthy, Shane has worked far better with Vince since returning ahead of the second brand split in 2016, following a seven-year sabbatical from WWE, where he tried to make it by himself in the business world, becoming the CEO of You On Demand, the first video on demand service in China. It's the classic leaving WWE to prove yourself on the indies and return to win the championship kind of narrative. But while Shane has always pitched ideas backstage, including rebranding ECW as an online-only MMA influence promotion back in 2006, five years before that kind of happened with NXT, he's never been fully in control of a brand's booking. But it appears he's been groomed for the role backstage since being written off TV as an on-screen character last October, when Kevin Owens beat him on the debut episode of SmackDown on Fox. Since then, he helped book January's Royal Rumble match with Heyman, has been sitting alongside his father Vince McMahon in the gorilla position at most main roster shows, and has been helping produce shows and pitching in his ideas as well, of which Raw Underground is just one. Are you excited about seeing Shane McMahon booking Monday Night Raw and why? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of Shane's sweaty fight club. And it seems Shane being considered to take over Raw is part of yet another creative restructuring in WWE. Ringside News have revealed the head writer of NXT, Joe Bel Castro, has resigned from his position, which Wrestling Observer Radio has corroborated, adding Bel Castro gave his notice to the company and is already gone from WWE. This follows two new writers being added to the NXT creative team in the last few months, amidst the show consistently losing to AEW in the ratings this year year, which Vince McMahon is reportedly unhappy about. Bel Castro first started writing for WWE in 2013, and was promoted to the lead writer position in February 2016. Last year, he became Vice President of Television Creative. Triple H was asked about NXT's booking team on Wednesday's TakeOver XXX Media Call, where he said we have a team that works with NXT that includes Shawn Michaels, Brian James, Road Dogg, and myself. So it's a group, and the ideas all go through that. It's interesting to note the historic backstage divides in WWE exposed by Vice several years ago, which would see Vince McMahon play Stephanie and Hunter's people off Shane and Kevin Dunn's. And those warring factions will soon have to fight in the Thunderdome. We don't need another hero. After almost six months of the total lockdown shows, our weirdly miss you performance center, WWE will move all main roster programming to Florida's Amway Center from tonight's episode of SmackDown, which, in typical pro wrestling style, they're calling the Thunderdome. We don't need the first outing will see two championship matches on SmackDown instead of the pay-per-view, with AJ Styles versus Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental title, and Cesaro and Sheamus defending the tag titles against Lucha House Party. And WrestleVotes has tweeted that, for a change, morale has improved because of the move. Source in Orlando says spirits are as high as they've been in some time. Many backstage road employees who have been off are returning, and the intrigue of the Thunderdome has staff excited. The energy this weekend from the talent performing should be off 
the charts. This follows WrestlingNews.co's report that Vince himself is also feeling very optimistic about the impending Thunderdome era. The company has got such high hopes for it that according to Fightful, WWE staff were told everything is top secret and that they are risking their jobs if any photos leak online. So here's loads of leaked photos that have come out online. Presumably to make sure their internet connection is strong enough ahead of tonight's episode, WWE invited fans to be part of a test Thunderdome stream last night, and almost every single one of those people posted images of what it looked like online. And what it looks like is an episode of Black Mirror. Ryan Satin of Pro Wrestling Sheet shared images of the setup with the first 15 rows taken up with LED screens, showing individual fans streaming their reactions from home and tweeting his own review. This makes a huge difference for me as a viewer. Looks like a big deal again as opposed to an empty room. Big E, however, tweeted that he's seen this before, posting a gif of guess who? 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 While former Attitude Era writer Brian Gowitz joked, it took millions of dollars and countless hours from the top minds on our production team, but we're proud to say we have finally perfected the technology to allow what chance to once again ruin live promos. Which brings us on to the question I'm sure everyone's asked themselves since WWE announced the Thunderdome plans. What happens if someone gets their dick out? As usual, WWE's aggressive legal team has that covered, with Saturn adding, there are a lot of things you have to agree to say in your responsible for any fines they might incur if you act inappropriately. And it seems acting inappropriately includes wearing an AEW t-shirt. As this was a rather large scale online test, there's bound to be the odd mistake here and there. Mistakes like accidentally adding one of the fans to the post-production meeting. According to Carbon Silk Thread on Reddit, so do take this with a pinch of salt, following the live test broadcast, they were accidentally kept on audio standby posting I'm still currently in the Thunderdome, and they can hear the entire post-production meeting, including talk of not allowing AEW shirts. Apparently, the reason that AEW talk happened was because they were discussing what can be shown on screen and that they have ability to quickly click and boot someone. They also talked about a list of shirts or what can be on screen. Emails that were sent out to participants ahead of time do apparently ask fans not to wear branded shirts that aren't WWE or their sponsors, which they're totally in their rights to do. It's just very, very funny. I've got a roundup of the rest of the wrestling news shortly, but first, here's a word from this episode's sponsor, us. Order the WrestleTalk magazine issue 21 now. The next issue of WrestleTalk magazine is now available in select stores and in print and digital form at WrestleTalkMerch.com. Our lead story looks back at the monumental 30-year career of The Undertaker, plus we examine the strengths and weaknesses of the AEW tag teams. Could this actually be the greatest tag division ever? All of this, plus we review Extreme Rules, give you 10 SummerSlam matches you must re-watch, and take an in-depth look at Slammiversary, support wrestling, print media, by ordering via the link below or go one better and subscribe. And now here's everything else that's happening in wrestling. Following the arrest of Philip Arnold Thomas over the weekend for breaking into the home of Sonya Deville with the intention of kidnapping her, yet more details have come out as part of Deville's testifying in a pre-trial hearing. Deville revealed she had received hundreds of messages from the man with incredibly disturbing implications, threatening murder, kidnap, and torture of not only Deville, but her family members who Thomas had mentioned by name, unless he got what he wanted. Thankfully, the judge has denied Thomas Bale. While WWE have the Thunderdome, AEW have announced they'll have actual fans in attendance. Tickets have gone on sale for next Thursday's episode of Dynamite, moved from its usual Wednesday slot by the NBA. The arena will be held at 10 to 15% capacity, all tickets will be physically distanced in compliance with local and state guidelines, and everyone will be required to wear face coverings and have their temperature checked upon arrival. Despite being one of the new pushed acts on SmackDown at the start of lockdown, the Forgotten Sons have, well, 
They've been forgotten about. They were removed from TV following their leader, Jackson Riker, controversially posting about the Black Lives Matter movement. Dave Meltzer has revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio that the team was set to win the tag team championships from the New Day before plans were scrapped, which would have been incredibly problematic if they went ahead. Speaking of not doing much while on TV, Eric Rowan, who was released from WWE as part of the mass firings in April, has revealed on Ryback's podcast that before he was let go, then Raw Executive Director Paul Heyman said he was in great standing with the company. Those were the last words I heard. That was the last time I was on TV. The release was a complete blindside in that respect. Following the Kabuki Warriors disbanding with Kairi Sane leaving WWE last month, Asuka has been teasing on social media that she might return to her full creepy clown makeup gimmick she used in Japan. She furthered those teases in an interview with the New York Post's Joseph Staskuski, revealing WWE is open to her using that gimmick again, and that if the time comes, I can show it. Meanwhile, in Japan though, Stardom have had to cancel the rest of their August shows following a member of their roster testing positive for coronavirus. And the ratings for Wednesday's unopposed episode of NXT are in, which drew its best number since November 20th, averaging 853,000 viewers. This is up almost a quarter of a million people, proving that both AEW and NXT would get much higher ratings if they weren't scheduled head to head. Interestingly though, Triple H has revealed NXT won't be taking advantage of the Thunderdome production, with the brand staying in Full Sail University. That could be a strategic error if AEW's arena-based production and presentation with fans starts to draw in more viewers. Who are the current favourites to win all the matches at SummerSlam? Press the video to the right to find out. and. Christopher Nolan's Tenet is out on Wednesday. Watch Luke and Laurie preview the biggest movie of the summer by clicking the video below that. I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. I've been Ollie Davis. Jam that jam.